I bought a chair. If you're not new to this channel, you probably noticed that I make lots of MBTI videos, duh, and also mention Enneagram quite a lot, which is weird because I've never actually made an Enneagram video ever before. And if you are, in fact, new to my little lair, I'm guessing you click because you want to know how to use Enneagram in storytelling and character creation. First things first. Before we go deeper into the topic, I have to, you know, tell you what Enneagram actually is and how it's different from MBTI, for example. Because many people mix those two up. Not on this channel, though. So the thing with MBTI. MBTI is actually the cognitive function theory in disguise. And without any eye-piercing tables, it's all about what skill sets, aka cognitive functions, you use when you are analyzing incoming information and make decisions based on it. How you look at the world and how you respond. That's it, there is nothing more. But Enneagram is actually completely different, and it hardly has any overlap with MBTI whatsoever. Enneagram mainly answers two questions. What are your goals and motivations? What are your fears? That's it. So the MBTI is the answer to the how question and Enneagram is the answer to the why question. They're not the same. So in MBTI we have 16 personality types. Why 16? Because science. But there are 16, that's what you need to know. With Enneagram we're talking about a personality system with 9 types. Are those types based on cognitive functions as well? No. There is no such a thing as cognitive functions in Enneagram. We have nine types that are based on, well, I imagine the most popular variations of human needs. We got nine different stacks of life goal plus fear. It has nothing to do with someone's preferred cognitive functions. Also, the numbers are arbitrary, there are no better or worse types, so just keep that in mind, they are all equally valid. Okay, let's for a second get back to storytelling. You probably heard all of those same advices about how your character has to have a character arc in the story, how they need to have clear goals, and motivations, and for the most part it is actually very true. But the thing is, many authors and people in general engage with storytelling in a very, and excuse me for this word, intuitive way. That means that you watch a bunch of TV shows, read a bunch of books, and when after all of that you go on the internet to learn some pro writing tips, they hardly make any sense to you. A character should have a personality, sure. A character has to have their fears and motivations, sure. That's what makes them a person. But what does all of that even mean? As I said on paper, it might have as much sense to you as you want, but when it comes to the actual implementation, you start hitting lots, and I mean lots of issues. How to make your character's personality consistent. How to make their personality make sense in terms of the story. How to make them likable. How to make sure that they are going to turn out the way you want it. You know, that's like barely 1% of all of the questions I used to ask myself, but you do not need to suffer, actually. Because on many, many of those questions, and on the most important one about the goals and fears, Enneagram is going to give you compelling answers. As I once said, and I will say it again, Enneagram and storytelling just match together perfectly. Oh Mary, why do I need to use a personality theory that is not actually scientific and based on someone else's observations with no argument? Alright, my dude, now, how are we even going to use Enneagram in character creation? Listen up. The best way to learn is to look at the examples, right? As I said, we have nine types in Enneagram personality chart. Let's start with, uh, I don't know, type 5. Don't even start thinking about the stereotypes associated with fives. Clear your mind and listen. Type 5's biggest desire is to be competent and capable. And their biggest fear is not being those things. Some people call fives the smartest Enneatype, and that is not without a reason. But there are many types of intelligence out there, so let's not go there. Let's just say that five's brilliance shows in their curiosity, because, again, they want to be competent and helpful. Type fives might be, for example, INTPs who use their TI and E bond together and analyze information, and build logical frameworks for themselves. That is possible, but it is also possible for them to be, for example, ESTJs who would use their TESI bond to be capable and helpful. Sensors might be curious too, they just use different approaches, it doesn't mean that those approaches are worse or better, you know what I'm saying. 
some Enneagram 5 characters are Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory, who is an INTJ, Odin from God of War Ragnarok, who is an ENTJ, Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreations, who is in fact a censor. I'm not sure whether he's an ISTJ or an ISTP, it's been a long time since I've watched the show. Yeah, purposefully ignored INTPs. Well, what about, I don't know, Enneagram Type 7? They are quite popular. Their main goal is to have fun and be happy. Main fear? To suffer and be unhappy. Again, they do not necessarily have a strict overlap with MBTI. I'm not saying that there are absolutely no tendencies. I'm just saying that MBTI and Enneagram are theories about two different things. The most popular MBTI correlation for Type 7 would probably be, I don't know, ESTP? because they use their SETI match to seek opportunities and therefore have fun in life. But even an INFP could be an Enneagram 7, as far as I'm concerned. It is quite unlikely, but not impossible. Also some Enneagram Type 7 examples. Dante from Devil May Cry, who is an ESTP. Jack Sparrow, who is an ENTP. I'm sorry, Captain Jack Sparrow. Harley Quinn, who is an ENFP. Now, of course, this one video would definitely not be enough to cover all of the Enya types, and I don't really want to melt your brain with all of the info. But let's take a look at just one final Enya type for today. Type 3. So their main goal is to be successful and valuable, and their fear is to be worthless and unsuccessful. I think at this point you already get the logic behind this. Probably the most popular options for Type 3s MBTI-wise would be ESFPs, ESTPs, and ENTJs. So for example, ESFPs would use their SCFI function stack to work their way up to the top in whatever industry they choose to dominate. They will be very open to new experiences, which is very important for success and progress. You know, networking? Ew. Or ENTJs, they would use their extroverted thinking to grind and their secondary introverted intuition to plan things ahead. So these are two very different approaches to, in its essence, one particular goal. Let's do some examples for Enneagram Type 3. Puss in Boots, who is an ESTP, there is no fucking way I'm gonna pronounce her name, this bitch from Inside Job, who is an ENTJ, and you know, uh, I don't know, <laughs> me. I gotta admit, I was very tempted to make this list look something like this, but I have a little too much class for that. If you guys will have more questions about Enneagram types, I am actually willing to make, like, full each type dedicated videos. Don't be afraid to let me know in the comment section if you want that. Now, what's with them fictional characters? How to choose an Enneagram type for your character? If you already have an essence of your character in mind, just read the Enneagram type descriptions and choose which one represents your character the most. And there you go, now you know what their fears and motivations are. This will help to hold the spine of your character together, if you can call it that. Yeah, yeah, the realest ones might say, but what about the Enneagram wings? That's important. Yeah, cho, that's a topic for another video, which I am definitely making. I know I mentioned MBTI a lot today, but if you are not really sure if you understand how it works and what are the cognitive functions, check out my other videos where I go in depth with every single type and their cognitive functions. Bye!